Okay, well, my, my actual uh, name is Ofemio Reynaldo Canchola, but the Ofemio is my grandfather's name. Reynaldo is my daddy. But everybody called me Ray since high school because they couldn't pronounce Ufemio. Mm -hmm. And the old people from, or old friends from Cementville called me Memo. Oh. Uh -huh. They still call me Memo, the, the ones that, are, that know me from way back. Mm -hmm. I was raised here in Cementville and I worked for the company for 45 years, 28 years here at the, at the old plant. Mm -hmm. And then 17 years at the uh, new plant on 1604. My dad came uh, from uh, 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 Guanajuato, Guanajuato. I don't know exactly when he arrived here in, in Texas or San Antonio, but he started working for the company in 1921. And he also worked 45 years, from 21 to 66. My daddy right away started living there. He wasn't even married when he, when he started here, because my, my parents got married in 1928. Oh, wow. And he started working in 1921. Mm -hmm. I started working June the 2nd, 1953, uh -huh. and retired July the 31st, 1998. Everybody was poor and we didn't, nobody, no, <laughs> we didn't know it. I mean, because everybody was the same, you know. We were used to the heat, no lights. As a matter of fact, there's, there's a tub out there where we had some, <laughs> some, she had some macetas there, some flowers. And that's where we used to take a bath. But mother had to put, put, get the water from outside. Now we did have two faucets, one in the, one in, uh, in the front and one in the back, but no, no water inside the house, no sink, nothing like that. And like I told you before, I, uh, we didn't have any running water inside the house. We didn't have electricity till after the war, till after 1945. Mm -hmm. And after the war also, uh, all the roads were uh, gravel. But after the war, they made the entrance with concrete. But they didn't pass it through the village. They went around, knocked some trees down, went around to the, into the plant that was, some, you know, it was concrete. Mm -hmm. But they left, the, they left the, the streets the same. And they didn't name the streets at first. Like my dad's house was number one, then the house across was two, three, four, five, six, like that. And we had, we had to actually one, two, we had four blocks mm -hmm. in Cementville. And they, later on, maybe the late 50s, early 60s, they named the streets. And where I, when we lived, it was Ortiz. And they named all the streets, uh, the last names of uh, workers that had been there for a long time. And our neighbor, Jose Ortiz, that's how come they named the street for Ortiz. And then there was Robles. And then there was Peña and then uh, Ponce. We had a general store called, uh, run by the Chavez, uh, and it was almost like in back of our house. And they had a, they sold, he sold gas, and he sold other things in there. And he also had like a little saloon. Because I remember he had like a, maybe they called it burlesque, I don't know. Because he had benches and a little stage there and performers would come in there. I remember that when I was small. Yeah. In Cementville, they, we had a private school run by, uh, inside Cementville. And then just outside Cementville, the uh, St. Anthony's, the, the sisters, but that was on, right on this side of uh, Nottingham. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I went to the Blue Bonnet School, which was the public school there. And, but I only went there for two years, uh, first and second grade, and then my mother changed me to Catholic school so I could make my first communion. So, and the way I figure it, because I, you know, by memory I know who lived where, and there were about nine houses in each side of the street. 
So I think, I think about 75 houses. And I saw what were you know, in the articles you said it was number about 95. Now later on, in the 60s, they did build houses in the very first street in, on Ponce, and there were those concrete blocks. But they only built maybe, well, on both sides, uh, maybe they built, I would say, if I would say maybe 10. Maybe 15 houses. Okay. Yeah. So we got, I guess it pretty, got, got pretty close to 90. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Sarasu was one of them that went there daily, and of course he would give us credit. I know he had a little little booklet and he wrote down there, you know, and we would pay him every week. Mm -hmm. And so did Gonzalez, Gonzalez from Kingwood. Mm -hmm. They did the same thing. And then there were other vendors that went in there. There were even, that, you know, those, I remember way back, uh, the man that had that monkey and that, that, that thing, they would go in there also, and then the man with a pony and would take pictures, you know, they'd take pictures with him. Mm -hmm. I never, they, they, they never took a picture of me, but uh, I've seen some other people from Cementville that had other children, you know, pictures on the horse. <laughs> I lived there till 1951. I got married in 51, and I moved out of Cementville for two years, and we moved to North near Brownfields. Mm -hmm. And and right away, well not right away, but in 1953, I got the job here at Cementville. So as soon, that was like, like I said, in June. So right away I asked for a little house in Cementville because I was paying $35 a month over there. Of course, we had everything inside the house. Mm -hmm. So uh, we came back to Cementville in a two-room house. But since we already had a refrigerator and a stove over there, and they were here, they, don't, they didn't have gas. But by that time, that time they had electricity. So I had to buy a butane tank connected so I could have my, my gas inside my house, mm -hmm. that little house. Yeah. But still no water, no running water inside the house. So she and the baby, my, my little daughter was born in 53. She, my daughter was three months old when we moved to Cementville. Mm -hmm. So they had to take a bath inside those big tubs. And I, and I have that big tub out there, you can see. Yeah. And, but they, she had to warm the water in the stove first get the water from outside, bring it in, and then with pails, put it in the... Yeah. Yeah. And I was lucky because when I worked, for, I, was, I worked for the, in the laboratory, and we had showers there. So I, took, I was able to take a bath every day, not only on Saturdays. Well, I don't know why they sold it, to tell you the truth, but through the years, till 1979, we, we were using gas from the city. And then we had a gas crisis in 79, mm -hmm. and we had to go to coal. Wow. And then the coal produced a lot of dust, mm -hmm. and all the people who had tuxedo drive right there, right next to the plant, and beyond, started complaining that their cars and their houses were all black and this and that. We had a lot of lawsuits. Okay. But then, of course, they, they, they told everybody, well, even from the, maybe the late 70s, they started p telling people that they had a deadline to get out of the cement wheel. Because they already probably were in the works of selling it and, you know, but of course, they don't tell anything to the employer that's handled by the front office, whatever. But they also said, we're gonna knock down the houses, but, if you want one of these houses, you can have it. All you have to do is pay to move it out. So people that had lots, they they took that option. They didn't lose their jobs. They just lo lost their you know their <laughs> their homestead. I lost track of a lot of people that moved in and out because I worked there, but I didn't live there anymore. Although my parents lived there at Cementville till 19. 75, I think. But my dad had a heart attack in 66, and he couldn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. 
but I arranged for him to stay there and they were taking my, the rent out of my paycheck so he could stay there. Okay. Which so the rent was, when Isabella and I were living there, the, the rent was two dollars a week. Well, At first I was very angry. <laughs> I was upset, you know. Because I always said, my beloved Cementville. Yeah, uh, but well, now I got, you know, like everybody else, got used to it. But the laboratory, the building, the laboratory is still there. The building is still there. And the powerhouse. And then, of course, the long, the, where the, all the theaters are. You've been to the theaters, right? Yeah. That was a clinker house. Yeah. And that, that part is there. And then there's another one close to... Canyon Cafe, there's that building over there. I forgot what what, what was that what was that for. But um, so, do you visit there now? Like, do you ever do you go to the quarry? Oh yeah, we just went there. We, we, as a matter of fact, we just bought ground there. But we fell down there right in front of Michael's. <laughs> well, I tried to figure out because where we lived, you know, I figured well, because uh, uh, across from the church uh, in Nottingham. That was on Benya Street, and then we would go down like that a long ways, and we, we lived in the in the in the first street over there towards the plant, and then there was a big tree, we would call it El Palo Gordo, a fat tree, and then there were legends or, or or stories that say that La Bruja came out at night and. And, and men would, would say, yeah, that lady appears there at night. Because a lot of men from the village walked to, to the plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so. Is that tree still there? I'm trying to look, I've been looking for it. And, and, and some guy from, the, uh, from Cementville, or that worked there, he swears he knows where it is, but I haven't er, never gotten to him and say, oh, show me that tree. Because in my mind I say, well, you see, the houses were this way, and I got to go this way here. The tree ought to be right here, close to the, past the, the Methodist Church. Me, the Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. But now the golf course is there, and the, you know, the quarry is gone, and...